I'm Ralph Slocum, Nordy3, you're joining me for Drumline Chapter 12. It's been two weeks since the most magical night of your life happened to with Laird. Since then, you've played in the big game against Mississippi, dating Laird on the down low, and now you're sitting with Eli in the hospital room. His pale face is shining with confusion as he grills you about the game. So, on, on the way back from the game on the bus, you just slept? Even though you won in overtime with the most fantastic play of the season? And, and then, after the game ended, all, all the sharks rushed the field, uh, tore down their goalpost, and you just took a damn nap? <laughs> I like this kid! Well, yeah. What's wrong with you, Reese? You're a college girl. You're supposed to be wild and crazy and staying up all night celebrating after a, a game like that. Even sick cancer kids know that much. Your mouth drops open in shock. Where did you even hear that? He shakes his head in disgust, the stripped beanie slipping down in front, over his eyes. For frustrated, he shoves it back up. Did you ride back next to Laird, at least? What is Laird saying to him during his visits? No, Laird's a senior. I'm just a freshman. I sat next to my friend, Smith, uh, since he's a freshman, too. We got the crappy seats near the front of the bus. Bummer. Yeah. Bummer. I think Laird likes you. He told me that you were pretty. Uh, are you dating him? I bet he'd like to date you. Uh, would you like to see some water? Do you think I should date him? Ooh, totally. And then maybe you guys can go on, like, on a double date with me and Amelia sometime. Y'all can take us down to the Starbucks next to the cafeteria or something. Ooh, I like you, kid. Starbucks. That sounds like a good plan, dude. I'll run it by Laren. So, have you asked Amelia out yet? Uh, sorta. Of. I, I tried. Well, what happened? Uh, that asshole, Jackson, interrupted us before she could answer. He totally did that shit on purpose. You kiss your mother with that mouth? <laughs> You're not faced by Eli's cussing, and you'd be more surprised if he didn't rob an F-bomb, but you'd at least have try. Bah! Did you try again? Not yet. Slumps against his mountain of pillows. I want to make it special for her, you know? But I think I, I might be running out of time before they, they let me out of here. They say I'm getting better. Your heart breaks over the longing in his voice. No, Eli. I promise it's never too late for love. Haven't you learned anything watching TV around her? Yeah, you're right. I heard Amelia talking about uh, cake pops the other day. She likes the, the birthday cake ones. Uh, the best because they're pink. I wanted to take her there to get one and a smoothie or something. Yeah? But that's probably stupid. No. I think it sounds perfect. No, if you're doing something a girl likes, you're doing it right, man. Always make sure your lady is enjoying what she wants to enjoy. That's like saying, hey, honey, you want to go sports game? Honey, you know how I hate sports. Yeah, but you're coming, right? <laughs> we guys don't get that diligence, okay? We we don't get that. We don't get that, okay? Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> let's go shopping, honey. Uh, all right, fine. You take a pen and paper out of your purse. Let's work on what you can say when you ask her again, okay? And before I leave, I'll run downstairs to buy a cake pop that you can take to her now. So you have no ex so you have an excuse to go talk to her. I was gonna say no excuse to not talk to her, but eh. Yeah? Absolutely. Um, your pickup line should be excuse me, do you have a band-aid? I, I just hurt my leg when I fell for you. Aww I think your hand looks heavy. Would you like me to hold it for you? Okay, these are these are these are these are cheesy and yet cute at the same time. You're so gorgeous you may even forget what pickup line was. Hmm. Okay, we're talking about kids here. The third one I like. Because that would be me. Because I suck at pickup lines. I suck. My pickup line's high. That's right, folks. High. <laughs> and then I proceed to run. Um. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, all these are cute. Except for the third one, I'd say it's more adult-oriented. I'd say the first two are something that kids would use. Um, 
I feel like, uh, number one, since they're kids. I feel like that one's a good one. Eli laughs and you get, gives you a smile so big that it nearly breaks your heart. An hour later, Amelia says yes, without even hesitation. Two hours later, you're doing the thing you hate the most in the world. Cleaning Marco's room. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! You should have talked to Laird about this, man! God damn it! <sighs> Empty cereal box? Check. Crumbs from the stale candy bars? Check. Dirty clothes and trash strewn all over the room? Check. You've sprayed for breeze to cover the scent of sweat, sour milk that lingers to in the air. Ugh. You start working your way methodically through the mess. Something crunches on your foot and you find a styrofoam cup leaking soda. Marco is so f***ing disgusting. Wearing a pair of latex gloves, you stoop to pick up a used tissue that... Oh god. <coughs> I'm disgusted now. Oh, I missed the trash can, which they misspelled, underneath the two condom wrappers. Wait a second. They're different sizes. A few inches away from the wrappers, you see something that stops you cold. No, 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 no. You're looking at a grape lollipop wrapper with a partially eaten sucker stuck to the side. He wouldn't. He couldn't with Marco? He obviously did, and twice. I think I'm going to throw up in my mouth. Are you sure? Come on, man! Even I'm not buying this! You gag, dry heaving over the trash can you just filled. You're cool with Smith having sex with guys. Oh, as I cough. <clears throat> it's him having sex with Marco. That as you gross down. <clears throat> I have to ask Smith about those. Your finger hits Smith's face and your phone's contact and you listen to it ring. A sexy voice comes out over the line with a grimace. You realize you've been punted to voicemail. Hey, Robin. You, uh... You pause. What if Smith is embarrassed by this, and that's why he hasn't said anything? And running him could wreck your friendship. You switch gears. Um, up for some Sammies after practice today? Give me a call and let me know. Ciao. Trash bag in hand, you shudder as you leave Marco's room, careful to lock the door behind you. What was Smith thinking? Marco, of all people? Are they on the DL? Might have been the reason he got on the team. Kind of like you got on the team because of, yeah. The next day, uh, yeah, yeah, she was skilled, blah, 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 blah. Don't give me that. Let's just say I'm sure it helped. The next day you walk into an already crowded building. It's 8 on a Saturday. The Rodner Sharks are at an away game, so it should have been a day off. Instead, you're doing 24-hour challenge known as Shark Day, where the entire band stays within the confines of the Bolt Auditorium. Anyone who slips up or goes unaccounted for for any point during the event is benched from the next halftime show. That is so stupid. Well, that's not going to be me. The first half is spent practicing and doing bonding activities. Everyone is starting to get prickly, though. Even the bathrooms have become sanctuaries for people trying to find a quiet place. You make a few laps of the halls when your phone rings. If this was 24 hours, just take a nap in a corner. Where are you? Practice room 4C. It's empty right now, except for me. Knock twice, a pause, then knock twice. A quiet place with Laird. It's almost too good to be true. You settle around a group of people arguing about whether bull sharks or great bikes were the deadliest. Bull sharks. You hear Amber's high pitched laugh. See? Everyone knows it, even the little drummer girl. You pause, your spine stiffening as you swivel back around to face her. Excuse me? What did you call me? The blonde girl you haven't met, Snickers. Throws her arms around Amber. Didn't you hear Amber? Apparently there's nothing little about her. Especially not the size of her sex toys. She must have had the loosest vag on the line. Right from overuse, all those private parties they have. Hear it. I saw it. You know, they're all getting a taste of that. Uh, mm, I'm not spending diamonds on defending myself. I'm sorry. Um, you know what? 
I'm gonna go. Oh man. <sighs> See, that would have been. You're not worth my time. That's me. And choice doesn't. Or chapters knows those. So they're like, yeah, go ahead, pick it. So I'm gonna go with option two. F you. Do you suck your lion's dicks with that mouth? Oh, are you jealous that it's not yours? Grow up, asshole. And Amber, I don't know why I expected better of you, since you're literally the band floozy. But come on. Women should stick together, not tear each other down. <laughs> That's a sarcastic laugh. That has always been a thing. Let's be honest. The day women stop tearing one another down is the day that humanity could actually go somewhere. Think about that, ladies. What you think about that? Men do it too, but not as badly. Humiliation burns like acid as you try to swallow. You hadn't realized that the news of your little stunt was being twisted in such a vulgar way. Even though they don't say his name, you thought your thought shoots straight to Laird. They're doing this because I'm the only girl on the team. If they found out that I was dating the captain of the team, shit. This is what I was afraid of, what I wanted to avoid in the first place. Marco materializes at your side because before you can go back and throat punch anyone in the group. He loops his arm around your shoulders and pulls you into an awkward half-hug, half-headlock. Just the hot shot I've been looking for. I need to talk to you about the stuff you left behind in my room. The group snickers and elbows each other knowingly. Your eyes burn and your fist shakes. I don't know what you're talking about, Marco. He heads down the hall, and you reluctantly follow besides. Four C's, this way. He stops at 3A, shoves open the door. Leave. A pair of clarinet players who had been making out in the corner flee the room before he turns and locks the soundproof door. I found some fuzzy black shirt on my desk chair. I assumed it was yours. I threw it away. I hope you didn't want it back. Shit, that's my favorite fleece from back home. Nope, it wasn't mine. You sure? He watches you carefully and you shrug. Maybe it was Smith's? You're so mad that the words fall from your lips before you can pull them back. Marco's face flashes with panic and you follow your instincts, sensing a rare weakness in his armor. What makes you think I had him in my room? Oh. The great lollipops. I thought maybe you'd had him over or something. You know, since he, you're his vet and all. You're scratching a mosquito bite on your elbow and try to look casual. Oh, uh, yeah, that, uh, I definitely didn't see anything else that would suggest why he'd been in your room. Marcus' face becomes suff suffused with rage. Shit, I should've kept my mouth shut. I was free and clear. You didn't see anything? Reese, you hear me. Nothing. Whoa. Agg aggression in a stance and angry tone sends warning signals shooting up and down your spine. It's time to go. Nope, sure didn't. Can I go now? He grins, sitting on the floor with his back against the locked door. Not for a few hours. I need a nap. I also need someone who can verify I can't leave the premises. I pick you. Fear snakes around your ribs, stealing your breath. You take in the locked door, the soundproof room, and the rumors the rest of the band is spreading. Are you serious? Yeah. Why wouldn't I be? I've got shit to do, Margo. You just can't keep me in here. Marco's eyes travel up and down your body, pauses at your breasts and layers. Oh, I can, and will. Does he think I'm going to sleep with him? He must have sensed your fear because he sneers. Relax, hotshot, I'm not going to touch you. You're not my type. Hell, you can take a nap, too, as far as I'm concerned. I don't care what the you do over there, as long as you stay quiet and don't leave. Is that really such a hard quest from the snare line lieutenant to a nad? Nope. Sounds peachy. I'll just take the corner here if you don't mind. Just said I don't care what the f you do. Just shut your mouth and wake me up around midnight or so. That's usually when they bring more pizza. I would have just filmed him. You got your phone. Hot resentment floods through you. Marco's holding you hostage to be his damned alarm clock. You pull out your phone. Camp. Stuck with Marco in 3A until midnight. Any chance you can rescue me? You hit send, but nothing happens. You try again. Your power, your phone powers off. The battery is dead. Your charger is in your bag in another room. 
the back of your head bangs uselessly against the soundproof wall. At some point you doze off because when you open your eyes, it's 11.49, you walk over and kick Marco's ankle. Wake up, pizza's here. Pulling the door open just enough to slide out, you jam it hard against him before letting it fall shut. Laird is rounding the corner and he hurries over. Where have you been? Well... Marco held me hostage. He did what? The fury on Laird's face as he was stepping back. He said he needed someone to verify his whereabouts or something. I don't know, he's just being weird. Did he hurt you? Try anything? Nothing I couldn't handle. Marco's just playing mind games with me. I sent you a bunch of texts, but I guess you didn't get them. I'm sorry. It's okay. I polished up all the snare harnesses in the equipment room. Made myself useful for a few hours. You winch, and that was a task for an ad. Not a senior. Laird, I'm so sorry. <sighs> Spent the rest of Sunday with me. And when we get out of here, I can make it through the next eight hours if I know I get to have you all to myself afterwards. And do what? He takes a step forward, and you can see he's already pushing out the front of a short. I can smell you from here. Cherries, flowers. On my pillow to smell like that before I fall asleep tonight. How do you feel about that? I think that can be arranged. Well, this looks cozy. Marco steps between you to, to get a drink. You didn't hear him come up behind you. I'm not interrupting anything, am I? Oh, I'd like to beat the shit out of you. Ah, uh, nothing I need your help with. Reese, funny. I haven't seen you around for the last few hours. His loud voice attracts the attention of the band director and a few drum majors coming down the hall. Did you sneak out? You know that's against the rules. Your jaw drops. Are you fucking kidding me right now? The band director pauses, trying to get a read on the situation. Is there a problem here? Marco shrugs a triumphant look on his face. Just asking Reese here if she can tell me where she's been for the last three hours or so. I know I haven't seen her around anywhere. That lying son of a bitch. I knew he was up to something. That's because she's been with me. Oh. I was just kind of blinded by rage. Laird clears his throat and stares down Marco, who looks angry. She has. I had her polishing all the snare harnesses. With a toothbrush, since I'm her veteran. Feel free to double check her work. She did a good job, even on yours. So it was just the two of you? How convenient. The director opens his mouth to speak, but Laird cuts him off. Nope, Smith was there for a while too. But since he worked faster, I cut him loose after the first hour. Made Reese finish up solo. Laird cocks his head in a fake concern. His voice is soft but steely with an underlying challenge. Do you have a problem with my methods? Are you questioning how I'm handling things? Mmm! Mmm! Go, boy! Get your freak on! Go! 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 I like this! I like this! Marco tried to screw us, and Laird saved our ass. Alright, I like this! I like this! Try to blend in with the wall, because all of a sudden, this isn't about you anymore. Marco knows that Laird is lying, and his suspicion glares as he's on to both of you. The band director shrugs and waves his hand as he continues down the hall. Marco snarls at you, tearing his gaze from Laird and stomps away. Dear holy angels in heaven who kept track of all these white lies on a never-ending tally sheet. <laughs> we didn't see any of that. Actually, we did not see any of that in chapter 11. I was actually kind of missing that. Now it brings me back to last week. <clears throat> Sides had been taken. Laird and you against Marco, and he just lost. Aww! I wanted more! So with that being said, hope y'all did enjoy the video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head in the description below. Links to social media or Discord and a few links to support me and my content. Without further ado, thank you all for watching. Oh, I need a vacation. It is 9.30. We'll probably get done with Drumline. I will tote probably one of the shorter ones, and then uh, like usually um well we'll have to finish up with probably well hold on let me take a peek here uh probably academy since it's three chapters so we'll get drumline done then the academy and vampire girl will be finished probably uh shortly thereafter um it'll probably have to be you know on friday morning quote unquote past midnight on on thursday basically um 
So like I said, that's the plan. <sighs> I, I, I miss my Thursdays, you know, sitting, chilling. Back when it was just choices, you know, just all, all of us doing choices. Now I miss it. This is what I'm do. Chapters are scaling me. <laughs> With that being said, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.